Hey all, here are OS Reviews. Today we're taking a closer look at the Bensai B10. This is a smart mini handheld printer that uses ink cartridges, and you can use this thing to print on any surface, whether it's flat or even curved, like on a water bottle. You can decorate any objects, and it comes with seven different options in terms of the ink colors, as well as even a waterproof ink option and a invisible ink option as well that will only show up when you're shining a special UV light on top of it. Could definitely be handy for DIY projects as well as for customizing things. You've been using it for commercial purposes or shipping, and in terms of that ultraviolet invisible ink, it can prevent counterfeiting as well as even putting onto your skin. And then each of the ink cartridges claims to print up to 2 million characters with claim durability in terms of being waterproof, so if it gets wet, it shouldn't just stain or fall out. The resolution coming in at 600 dpi and it will print for up to three hours before you need to recharge it again. I will point out though that this is not the only model that we've seen out of small handheld printers. Uh, it includes about two years ago we checked out the print cube which tries to do the exact same thing. In fact uh, the only difference is just the ink cartridge system being proprietary as well as the Celpic S1 is yet another alternative that again is a handheld smart mini printer. The concept here is quite familiar Familiar, although Binside does have a few more special ink cartridges available for you to pick from. Seems like it also goes by the name Print Fox. And then here we have the mini printer right on top, along with an included ink cartridge, which is just a standard black color. It's essentially the same as any inkjet based printer that you may have in the house, just for regular document printing, just in a more handheld form. It's not exactly the same as a thermal mini printer that we have also seen recently on this channel, since those will print out on an existing piece of paper that is fed into the printer versus this you can print on any surface even a table a desk and so it gives you a bit more flexibility but as a result you do have to replace these cartridges just like any regular printer when it runs out. We've also got a USB type-c charging cable in the box along with a quick start guide and the replacement ink cartridges will look like this. So taking a closer look at the mini printer it has this kind of interesting industrial look with these accents running across it. it reminds me a bit of a mini luggage or even a power bank made by Zendir and we have just an LED on the front that will tell you when it's turned on when Wi-Fi is connected and then this is basically the power key. Overall it feels pretty rugged in terms of its build even though it is made out of plastic and then on the side here we have the Type-C port for charging, a similar kind of pattern going on for the back and then finally on the top here if you press on this key it will open up this flap where you can pop in the ink cartridges and once that is snapped into place the bottom compartment here is magnetic so you can just apply a bit of force and it pops out and over here it also has a bit of a seal that when you apply the lid it prevents the ink from drying compared to the Celpic S1 which is a little bit larger as you can see there in terms of its width but at the same time the print cube is still a touch smaller by volume I would say uh, but that also means that the ink cartridge in here is also smaller as a result. Let's go ahead and just pop in this ink cartridge it snaps into place pretty easily and afterwards close everything up and we are ready to go. Let's take a closer look at the companion app next. So setting things up, we go into Wi-Fi and then connect to the PRT Fox. The UI here is a bit primitive, but we're able to see the battery percentage remaining in our printer right now, which is at full capacity. If we're connected, the light here will turn green. And then if we tap on the top section here, under system settings, we can change the print resolution, such as go between 300 dpi or the maximum 600 dpi. And you can also take a look at the print direction going from left to right, or if you're moving from right to left, you can also flip that orientation. So let's do a quick test of a print and then run it across the page and then it's done. So that is the first kind of sample image. Returning to the main home screen, from here we can now create our own custom prints, and this text area here will display a visualization of what we want to print in real time, whether it's a text, a QR code, a barcode, or a photo. Our text can also be further adjusted in terms of the font, as well as the uh, overall size that you want to print it out at, although admittedly the options for font size are a little limited right now, I only see two in fact, so maybe they can add a few more in the future, and now we can just simply pull it along and we have the text printed out OS reviews hello world and again it looks pretty sharp and it pretty much instantly dry so you can run your finger across it and there's no smearing or anything like that so pretty good in terms of the quality of the ink a few other remarks though being that uh, the ink cartridge 
especially when the first few prints is a little bit aggressive in terms of how much ink it dispels. So if your piece of paper is rather thin, it does have a tendency to also kind of become visible on the other side. Once you push over a text to the printer, you can keep on printing the same thing without having to re-push it over every time. And so in our case, the memory now is currently holding the statement, OS reviews hello world. If I want to print it again, tap on the button one more time and I can just pull along. You can actually go at a pretty fast speed, by the way, so you don't have to be super deliberate or slow. I can actually zoom across the page. As long as it's relatively stable, everything is still very much visible. I did notice here though that the maybe top section of the letter OS does seem to be a little bit cut off at places. Picture printing is another area on their Android app that isn't quite working yet, where if you tap on pictures, basically everything is showing up as gray. Again, the UI of the app here, I do think needs a bit of work. Uh, otherwise, in terms of barcodes and QR codes, let's try this feature. So from here, if you enter any barcode, which can be a sequence of numbers, so let's say one, two, three, four, five, it will generate the equivalent barcode up above. And this part here is pretty easy to use and it's done in a pretty intuitive way it is working. We can also change the width and the length of the barcode and we can tap on the check mark if we're satisfied. From here we can just tap on print again and over here it will turn blue once the image has been received and we can also then tap on the button here once to then proceed to print it out. We can even print out something like the timestamp if you are trying to sell maybe a food product that is perishable. And the interesting thing about this timestamp is it's dynamic. It's actually moving second to second, as you can see there, depending on when you hit on print. But even with smaller text, you can see how everything is still, for the most part, legible. Again, I talked about how you can try printing out images, but for that, I wouldn't really recommend doing it too often, at least with the black ink cartridge, because it will print out in monochrome black and white. So it makes the most sense for things like barcodes and simple text. If you are trying to print out images, basically splice up the image into three sections, depending on how large the image is. So it'll print out the first uh, top row and then the next row and then the row underneath it. So you have to kind of align the parts of the image. So things are definitely legible, but it's a little bit tough at times because sometimes the image again will be in color, but it can only print it in black and white. So some of the conversion here and the edges details might be a little bit lost. So that's why I would say text as well as barcodes probably going to be the forte of this printer so for example if we wanted to print on a phone case let's just use this as an example and try to print out os reviews we can kind of simply roll it along we have the text printed down below there it's actually on a kind of soft touch rubber material but even so it looks for the most part legible if i run my finger across it it's not really falling out as you can see there so almost instantly dry so at least it is good in terms of durability and then technically, yes, you can also print on something like plastic or even metal or aluminum, and it actually surprisingly sticks on. But in terms of the surfaces, if it is super curved, it just takes a bit more patience and learning for it to actually kind of apply correctly. So here's an example. It might look a little bit stretched and funny, especially kind of the first attempt. I was using a bit too much pressure and maybe dipped the bottle in. That kind of created a little bit of distortion, but actually the print after a split second here is actually dry. It's not coming out on my finger and it still is for the most part visible. Let's also give it a try using the invisible ink cartridge. Initially, you could see a very faint outline as the ink is still drying, but then after a split second later, you can see it gets very faint and then eventually just becomes impossible to see. So for that, I'm going to try and shine this UV light over the text, and you can see now it becomes fully visible hidden text. So any standard UV light bulb will work. So that is pretty cool, I have to say, this invisible ink option. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of this uh, Bensai B10 mini handheld smart printer. The process of creating the prints is also relatively straightforward and simple and definitely a compact printer which is still impressive to see at the end of the day. You can check out more details in the links below if you're interested in learning more but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. It's been the first look at the Bensai P10.